Mark and Robert, or Jeeves and Worcester, as I should address you. Um, what attracted you to tackling these iconic roles on the West End stage? Robert, thank you. Um, well, they're funny books. I used to read the books when I was a teenager, and uh, funny characters saying funny things in funny situations. And then I came to see the show here with the warm-up cast, as I like to call them, the award-winning warm-up cast. And, um, and it was a very, very very enjoyable night at the theatre and just a terrific 30s, absolutely brilliant part um, that anyone would give their left arm for and I didn't even have to give any arms, mm. in fact they, they let left me, you fully intact. They completely did, so far, so it seemed like a good idea. And Mark, it's your first return to the stage in 20 years, I believe. That is more or less correct. Why? Why now? Why this why? show? Well, because because obviously because it's a good part, isn't it? And it's a good show, and um, it's a challenge. And if you're going to come back, do it with that rather than you know, a third man in Henry the Seventh Part Six or whatever you know was might have been offered in the past. Um, yeah, of course, you know, big challenge. Nice. It's always slightly different, I suppose, uh, stepping into a role as opposed to. Um, creating it from the off, we, how, to, uh, to what extent are you able to put your own stamps onto the portrayals? Well, the lights are where the lights are and the sound is where the sound is, and so you've got to hit you know, various things, so that, uh, it's fairly structured and, and static in that way, but I think vocally, you know, my Bertie is quite different to Stevenson's and, uh, you know, you do your own thing, you know, the first time I saw it, I thought, that's fantastic. I, I think he's doing an amazing job, and then the second time I saw it, I was going, now, how does he do, how, how, how did he learn all that, but, okay, and then I started, during rehearsal weeks, I started hearing Stephen's stuff, and eventually got to the level that you need to be at, which is, he's doing that all wrong, um, you know, d no disrespect to Stephen, but you, of course, you, you find your own way of, um, of doing it, and I'm sure he'd feel the same if he saw, when he saw, if he saw um, mine, so, um, it's, there's plenty of flexibility, really, apart from, you know, you've got to be in a certain place at, on stage at a certain time. But. Um, and you've both been in comedy partnerships previously, and now you've um, joined in, in a new marriage together. Uh, how have you, have you found your relationship as comedians and your, and your chemistry? He's the, he's the bully. I won't the be, emotional I basically manipulator. Won't, I basically won't speak to him. I speak to him through a series of sort of sneers, growls, mm. and subtly undermine him. I try to steal his pens in case that drives him mad. Tisking, look, it's a very Putting his handbag tisking. in the fridge, um, just various gaslighty things to try and mm. drive him up the wall. You know, it's lucky that I'm, He hasn't even worked it out. It's lucky that I'm, uh, I've got such a big open heart that I can deal with that. Mm. Um, forgive him for that. Uh, what is it about this production in particular as well? Because there's been many iterations of G's and Worcester over the nice years on stage and screen. Um, but what is it about Perfect Nonsense that, that you feel stands it apart from the crowd? Well, it's a very, very fast-paced, uh, tightly put-together, uh, exciting romp. Um, it's a massive caper, um, and there's lots of exciting things going on on the stage all the time. And um, it's just a very, very entertaining show. Even for the tourists who don't speak English, uh, they're having a terrific time um, because there's lots, lots of stuff to watch as well as, um, not just as, well as some of the best lines in English literature. Yes, you know, some of the it's not just Woodhouse, but obviously it is Woodhouse. There's loads of lovely Woodhouse uh, words to, to enjoy, but it's also the, the conceit of putting a poor theatre thing on top of it, of watching three people trying to present you know, as best they can, several characters and a story. Yes, the idea is watching them struggling with the theatrics. Bertie yeah. has this story to tell, and uh, the guys at his club have said, "You should be doing this on the stage." And so the idea is that Bertie is putting on this show, and Jeeves is helping him. Jeeves has made lots of scenery, and Jeeves helps him and plays the other characters, and uh, and so it's it's a sort of play within a play mm -hmm. in that sense, um, a, a sort of idiot trying to put on a show, um, but because Jeeves is there, it going remarkably well. It's a hilarious show, very funny, fast, exciting, and funny. Did I mention funny? funny it's and funny. also funny. And it doesn't go on for four hours. Yeah, you're in the pub by you know, quarter to ten. Some you, you don't want to sit there for four hours, do you? No. Not naming names, but yeah. yeah. You don't want to listen to the fellow blathering on for four hours. Or he will blather. He will. He goes on and on, doesn't he? So it's a good clean show, in-out fun. 
There you go. Happy ending. And a dance. No one dies. We could go on and on.